Hi, welcome back to the DLP Gen tutorial. In the previous movie, I just shown you how you could prepare your own input files for DLP Gen starting from a PDB file. Now what I'm going to do is show you how you can use input files present in my web page to prepare ionic liquid solutions. If we go to my web page, uh, you will find several cations and anions that can be downloaded and directly used with my program. Currently, I have almost 100 cations, anions and neutral molecules that you can use uh, in your simulation uh, in a very, very easy way, as I will show you. Uh, just a few things that I would like to to show you, for example, in the case of imidazolium derivatives, I have, for example, different uh, cations with a different alkyl chain length. And if you download in this case, you will get a package, which is here. And if you open it, you will see that you have several cations inside, which you can use. So now, I'm going to create a folder where I will put the data that I want. And for that, I'll go into my, uh, my home directory. Uh, I'll call it um, Ionic Liquid Test. But now I'll go to this folder. And the first thing you need to do is to download the, the library file. Uh, to use this database of cations and anions, you should use the CLP uh, force field. And for that, you can just simply click and you'll get the, um, the folder. Or, as I normally do, I will copy the link. And now I will download it directly to here. Uh, sorry. And now I have the file here, and then I will unzip it. Okay. And as you see now, I have a, a folder called Force Field Clap, and I can move there. And basically, what we you have here is a PCF file and uh, as you can see uh, it has already everything more or less set up we just need to change the molecule name put how much how many molecules of each type we want and everything is set another thing that I want you to, sh to, to notice is that in this case, the unit cell is defined in a different way from the, the, that one used in the previous tutorial. Both are equivalent and you can use one or the other. There is no problem with that. Um, now, if we see what is inside the, the moles folder, you can see the, the CLP library. And actually, we can take a look on it and so basically you have the information on how this uh, library file was created which match the last updated version here and this is important because from time to time I'm updating the and adding more cations and ions and neutral molecules to the to this list and because of that the parameterization needs to be updated so from time to time, if something doesn't go right, you should download the, the latest version of this library file and replace it. And as you see, you have all the information about the atoms and the force field here. Uh, there is some description about what, the, for which type of molecule this parameterization is related. Then we have the bonds, the angles, dihedrals, and the propers. So, the next thing we need to do is just to um, put the, the gen files inside the moles directory or moles folder. 
So I just moved to the moles and now I'm going to choose one, for example, this one here. Uh, C1, 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 C1. So it's an imidazolim ring with all, all uh, positions substituted by a methyl group. And if I press it here, I will get the parenterization in my, in my file. So what I need to do now is simply create... I'm going to do something first. I'm going back. I'm going to copy the name so that it can match. And now I will create the file name. Of course, you can also download the file. I'll show you next. Now I just press it again and I copy the data inside. As you can see here, there is also a scheme of the molecule uh, in, the, in, the, in the file so that you can see where each atom uh, is in the molecule. And there is also information about where was this uh, force field uh, came from. So now I just copy it and that's it. And now I have a gen file for this cation and now I'm going to choose an anion. Uh, I'm going to be Um For example, in this case of b uh, there are two force fields, one that I called old and another one which is new. So basically the difference is that in the case of the new force field, it was uh, an updated version that was re um, the released in 2017, uh, while the old version is from the original publication on, in 2004. In this case, what I'm going to do is just copy. I will copy the, li the link, and then you can use wget again. And you are, we already have the file here. So that's another way which you can use uh, to get the files. And as you see here, you have the, this is the coordinates, the information about the molecule, the, scheme, the 2D scheme of the molecule, the two references, the two 2004 and 2017 paper, and then the PDB structure for the file. So now we have the cation and an ion for our ionic liquid. And now I'm going to create a solution with a neutral molecule. And in this case, for this tutorial, I will sh use water. As you can see here, at the moment I have uh, three types of force fields or models for water. I normally go to tip for P and I'm going to download it. And now I have my water model here. This is the force field from 2015. And this file, instead of having only the, the atomic coordinates and the PDV structure, it also has some additional information regarding this model. The case of the rigid model, it is used with, uh, with uh, DL poly and uh, it will make all the entire molecule rigid. Why? Because this dummy M atom doesn't have mass and for this reason, uh, the, the, in order to use DL poly, you need to set all the entire molecule um, as rigid. Uh, in the case of Gromax, it is necessary to define this M site as a virtual site. And these are the instructions to do this using uh, for, for Gromax output files. Uh, there is another thing that I would like you to, to notice. Is that if you use uh, rigid units with deal poly and if you use PACMOL, you'll get some problems with the Caternion um, calculation. And um, for that reason, 
you need to use the extended box uh, ability of DL DLP gen in order to generate the config file. If not, if you don't do this, and if you use PacMol, you will not be able to run the calculation. And so, what we need to do now is just set our solution. Just going back, I have the PCF, and I'm going to copy this file or this information. I'm going to paste it here and now what I'm going to do is simply start adding our molecules so the first one is the cation I will remove as I said before the gen information I will ask for 100 cations for this reason I want 100 anions And finally, I would like to have some water molecules in my system. And let's say I want to have 20 water molecules in my system. And of course, now I have three molecules. And at this point, uh, I will just put a title, test ionic liquid water. something like that okay and at this point I can run my program to generate the um, the input files and for that DLP gen minus I will use PACMO in this case so minus uh, dense uh, I will ask for a density of 0.8 for example I would like to have Gromax output files, so minus GMX, and that's it. And now let's run. So the program has just finished. So basically, it read the input file with the contents of my molecule, uh, of my system. Uh, it computes all the connectivity between the molecules. And there is something here which is very important in this case, which is the case of the of this molecule. Okay, so this substitute substituted imidazolium. Where is it? Uh, it's here. Okay, so we have these nitrogen atoms here in the imidazolium ring, and uh, the carbons uh, connected. Uh, to in the to these nitrogen atoms uh, are in a pl planar configuration and this is very difficult to to unlike carbons which is fairly easy to know if you if we have a structure that is sp2 or sp3 uh, in the case of nitrogen this is not clear so what DLP gen does it computes the angle formed between the nitrogen and the carbon atoms that are attached to it and that this result that it's here and as you see for the first one uh, the angle is very close to zero so it's planar and it will consider an improper dihedral for this um, for this group of atoms and the second one it's 178 degrees which means that it's also very fairly planar and, and because of that it will also consider an improper dihedral for this. Then we have the connectivity and it starts converting the files and here it is the, uh, it links to PacMol and there are the, the files that should be used to, 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 to run your simulation and uh, what I'm going to do now is just open with vmd the config.pdb file so that we can see what the program has computed and so this is my simulation box with all the cations and ions and water molecules here it is one another one there and this is how it, how it can be done and to run gromax 
Okay, we can take a look to the topology. So we have the three components here. And if you go to the molecular ITP, we can see all the information about the molecules in this file. Another thing that we can do is to do the same, run the program again, but to obtain DL poly output files. And, oh, sorry. Yes, okay. Uh, I just want DL poly files using a extended simulation box, as you see here. And now we have the input files for DL poly, the, the, the cation data, the anion data, and the water data with the rigid unit in this case. Okay? And finally, if we look to the config, you can see the difference. And in this case, all the molecules are very far away from each other to avoid any uh, uh, superposition of the molecules. Okay, so with this I finish this tutorial now and in the next I will try to show you how to build crystal structures to simulate solids.